everyone, my name is Miss B. Hanley, and today I am talking about the elements of theater. Yes, I have made this video before, and I am remaking it to include some new information about drama and theater to give to you. So let's start with the first element of theater. The first place that you begin when you do any kind of theatrical production is the play or the script. The script of any play or musical is the dialogue, songs, and lyrics that are included in the story. When you read a script or a play, there's a specific way in which it's supposed to be read. Most productions will have acts that separate the main conflict happening in the play or musical. Additionally, Plays and musicals have scenes, which are smaller sections within a larger act. Each scene will have dialogue. This is when two or more characters talk to each other in a specific scene. You may also have one character speaking alone while the other characters listen. This is known as a monologue. And finally, you could have a character alone on stage speaking just to themselves or to the audience. This is known as a soliloquy. Also included in a play or script are stage directions. These stage directions will often include the background, the scene, and the set that is happening behind the actors on stage. Stage direction can also detail character movements on stage or what they do when they're not talking. These stage directions can indicate how an actor should say their lines in the specific scene. And finally, stage directions can be there to tell a director how the scene should be blocked. Blocking is how the characters move on stage. These stage directions can indicate to the actors or the director how the characters should move upstage, downstage, left or right stage. A typical stage will have nine areas. Those areas are defined by upstage, which is the part of the stage that's furthest away from the audience. You have downstage, which is the part that is closest to the audience. And then you have center stage, which is obviously in between up and down stage. You also have stage left and stage right. Stage left and stage right are based on the actor's point of view, not the audience's. So if you're looking at a stage from the audience's point of view, stage left is going to be on your right and stage right is going to be on your left. To the actor's perspective, if you are standing on the stage, the left and right stage are going to be based on your perspective. So if you're looking out toward the audience, stage left will be your left and stage right will be your right. Let's get back to how plays are structured. Most plays have what is known as a five act structure. This five act structure is exactly the same as you would see in a typical plot map, starting with an introduction or exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and the resolution. However, more modern musicals only have two acts. These two acts are separated by an intermission, and usually the main conflict is presented at the end of Act 1 and resolved in Act 2. You may also have a play that has a one-act structure, where the play has been shortened into one singular act with no intermission, and the entire conflict is resolved within that one act. A play is a production without singing or dancing. Some plays might include dancing or singing, but it's not the main focus of the play itself. A musical, though, will have songs and dance interwoven within the dialogue to help tell the story. The difference between a play that has music and a musical is a musical uses the songs to help drive the story and the characterization. A musical can have several different types of music within it. A musical can have a solo, which is one actor singing on their own, a duet, two actors singing to each other or about each other, or an ensemble number, which should include the entire cast. In all plays and musicals, there are two main forms that a story can take. First is a tragedy. This would include a tragic hero, and the tragedy usually ends in death or exile. Additionally, you can have a comedy, where most of the elements that happen within the musical, while there might be some sad things that happen, most of the things that happen in a comedic musical are supposed to be funny and lighthearted. Comedies usually always end in either a marriage or any other type of happy ending, or the conflict being resolved. There are also different roles in theater. 
An actor is not the only person who puts on a theatrical production. You have a director. There can be several different directors involved in a musical or a play. Typically with a musical, you would have a music director and a choreographer who are in charge of organizing the music and singing and dancing as well. Ultimately though, the director is the one who makes the final decision in a musical or play. In a theatrical production, you also have to have people behind the scenes to help work the sound, the lighting, the set, the props, and the costumes. Let's start with a sound technician. A sound technician's responsibility is to find and operate sound effects within a musical or a play, as well as the microphones that actors might wear during their performance. A lighting technician is there to make sure that the lights in the house and on stage work efficiently and they're, and they're turned on and shining in the appropriate ways at the appropriate times. A lighting technician might also help design certain elements within the lighting. For example, if you wanted to have blue or red light during a certain scene, the lighting technician would make sure that those lights can do those things at the specific time requested. You also have set designers and builders. In a theatrical production, most productions will have a set this is the furniture and scenery on the stage that help build the scene for the audience. Building a set is not like building a room or a house. It has to be specifically built for the stage it's being performed on in order for the actors to navigate through as well as for the backstage workers to change the set if necessary. A costume designer is in charge of the costumes, obviously, the clothing that the actors wear. It's important that a costume designer work individually with each actor to make sure that their costume fits when they do their performance and there's no mishaps that could happen within a performance itself. Additionally, a costume designer is in charge of making sure that costume changes in between scenes happen smoothly. You might also have a makeup designer. Sometimes costume and makeup work together to ensure that the makeup and the clothing match the actor and the costumes that they're wearing. But all of this is done before the performance and prepared for the actor before they go on stage. Makeup design can be very tricky, especially if an actor is playing a different type of character than a human being, or they're playing a different age of a character than what the actor actually is. You also have a person to manage the props. Props are the physical items that are used by the actors on stage. A props manager's responsibility is to make sure that the props are organized, available to actors on the right side of the stage that they need them, and are working or doing what they need, what the props need to do during a specific performance. Finally, you have a general backstage crew. The backstage crew is there to assist during the performance. If something happens with an actor during a costume change or during a scene change, the backstage crew is there to pick up the slack and help things out. Backstage crew is also needed to help change set. If something needs to come off the stage or come on a stage during a transition, the backstage crew is there to ensure that those transitions happen smoothly and efficiently so that the performance can continue. All theaters are different some with their own unique stage, which I will talk about in just a minute. But first, let's take a look at the different areas of a theater. First, you have the stage, which is where the main performance takes place. And then you have the area for the audience. The area where the audience sits is known as the house. Aside from audience seating, the house may include the lobby, the box office, and the concession stand if a theater provides it. In the house, you can have several different places that the audiences can sit. The floor, which is the bottom level, the mezzanine and the balcony are higher levels that audiences can sit in order to get a higher or bird's eye view of the performance. Behind the audience, there is most often a sound and light booth where the sound and light technicians do their operations for the performance. In a theater, you will usually also have a backstage area where actors can get into costumes and crew members can set up their props and set. The backstage will usually consist of different rooms, dressing rooms, costume room, and the green room, which is where actors and crew can wait for their turn to go on stage. Finally, some theaters have a fly tower. The fly tower can be used by stage crew to fly scenery and curtains in and out of the stage or to lift actors to look as if they are flying in the performance. 
There are also different types of stages in theatrical productions. There are four main types of stages that I'm going to talk about in this video. You might see some others in your experience. The first and main type of stage that you might see in any production is known as a proscenium stage or a proscenium arch. The proscenium stage is the most common type of stage. It's like going to a movie theater and watching a movie. The stage is set back from the audience and there are curtains on either side of the stage to hide the backstage area and crew. There is only one direction that the audience faces and usually is in a curve and on a rake or a slant so that any seat from the audience can get a good view of the performance. The next type of stage is known as a black box. A black box is a small black room where the stage and the audience are on the same level. Sometimes you might have a stage that is raised in a black box theater, but most of the time the stage is at the same level as the audience. Additionally, in a black box theater, seating is flexible. Seating can be made to face one direction or be on all sides of the performing area. Black box theaters are extremely limited in their seating and usually can only seat about 20 to 50 people during a performance. Black box theaters are usually experimental in the performances that they produce. The next type of stage is known as a thrust stage. A thrust stage is actually called a thrust stage because it is thrusted into the audience. Seating for the audience is on three sides of the stage instead of just one. And a thrust stage can be pretty tricky to work with during a theatrical production because the director has to work very closely with the actors, the set design, and the lighting crew to make sure that the performance that's being given is able to be viewed by all members of the audience, no matter which way they are facing. Thrust stages can be very difficult to use in theater productions, but they also can sometimes do the most interesting productions because of their interesting seating arrangement. Finally, the last type of stage that I'm going to talk about in this video is known as an arena stage or theater in the round. As you can probably guess, seating for theater in the round or an arena stage is on all four sides of the stage. The stage is completely surrounded by audience members. This can be pretty tricky for some musical and play productions because the actors have to be aware that no matter which way they are acting, the audience is watching them, not just from the front, but from the back and all three sides. Most of the time, if you see a theater in the round or an arena stage, the backstage area is actually behind the audience and the actors come through the audience to enter the stage. These are the main elements of theater that we're gonna learn about in class this year. We will go into more depth about different types of plays, musical, stages, and roles, but for now you have a basic understanding of what it takes to put together a theatrical production. I hope this helped you better understand the elements of theater and I'm excited to get to learn more with you in class. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in class. Bye!